Hey everybody, NavyDoc5184 here. Welcome to another Nightwish reaction. Today we are reacting to Wanderlust from the Wishes and Eternity concert. So, uh, this concert in particular is really starting to grow on me because um, once I, I think it was uh, the last song from this concert I reacted to, I learned that Marco wasn't the bass player in this one. So it feels like with this one, it's like I'm really seeing Nightwish kind of like I guess you could say at their beginning stage like this is like the OG lineup so I think that's why I've really um, been enjoying these because it's always fun for me to see because I know the lineup has changed quite a bit and it's always interesting to me to see how things like change in terms of like the energy you get the sound you get and stuff like that and from my last reaction I had noticed like even when um uh, Kai replaced Yuka on the drums how it's like you got a different energy from there But it's like at the same time you really didn't feel like you were really missing much It's like yeah, you're missing The exact energy that Yuka brought but what Kai brings to it it more than makes up for it It's a very different feel But at the same time you're not left wanting and I feel like I kind of get the same thing when I watch the OG lineup on this um, between this and End of an Era is probably my favorite two concerts to go to when I'm looking for um, Taria songs to react to and this is really climbing up there really quick um, just as I said before there so far has not been a Nightwish song that I have reacted to that I have not absolutely loved and I'm seeing so many people talk about how, you know, when it comes to their favorite Nightwish songs, it just happens to be the last song they happen to listen to, which I completely feel. I completely understand that feeling. Like, I know I was totally set on Storytime being, like, my favorite song, but then Elon just kind of went and kind of took that over. But I would imagine because there's still so much for me to go through, that could easily still change. So it's just amazing the work that this group pulls out no matter what their lineup is because while the sounds and everything may be different I think that's what makes them great is because they sound fantastic no matter what style they're doing it is absolutely awesome and that really speaks a lot to them as a group that they're able to do that because there's not a lot of you know people that can do that that can really I guess you could say, I don't want to say adapt or fully change, but you know, definitely dip their toes into different sounds and genres in a way. And the fact that they do this so easily is absolutely a testament to how great they are. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this particular reaction. I will leave a link to the original video in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. Dude, absolute fire intro on there right there. I love it. Of course, you never go wrong when Empu is uh, highly featured. Ooh. Okay. Oh, this is a very interesting tune. Ooh. Ooh, that was nice. Oh, yes. Oh, come on, y'all. Get up. Okay, y'all. This is a very interesting tune. This almost feels like completely different than what I'm used to with them. I'm not going to lie. The intro and then when Taria started going in on the vocals, I'm not going to lie, instantly in my head, like I'm getting these images of 
like an anime opening. This sounds like this would be such a great song to use for like an opening credit scene for an anime or even just something in a video game. And I think that again, just goes into just how awesome they are at being able to do so many different things. And Tario is pulling off some very impressive vocals on there. I wish I could fully describe what it was she was doing, but as someone that was in choir and knowing, you know, the kind of, um, different techniques, you know, and things that you do when you're singing. Some of the stuff that she does, you can definitely tell where her strength is. She's definitely very classically trained, opera trained, and everything like that. And that is the thing that I love about this era of Nightwish is you get that beautiful mix of the rock, uh, rock slash metal plus like the opera feel. And since those are two genres that I like and hearing them blended so beautifully, that is where I think this era is the strongest at that mix. And it is totally because of her. And as I said before, when I was talking about the different things the lineups bring, you know, like with Annette, you know, I feel like I get more of a, a pop feeling on there, but they make it work and they make it work beautifully with floor i feel like you kind of get a little mix of both but she is definitely more i feel like more of a rock vocalist um she can get like the operatic in there and the classical in there but again it's something that just works so great and again credit to tumas for his compositions and making it not only still sound like nightwish but sticking to the strengths of whoever happens to be doing the vocals of said song. It is really a testament to him and how well he's making this work. And, you know, all the pieces work so well together. And it's like, it doesn't really fully, I don't, well, I don't want to say it doesn't matter what they bring to the table because it obviously does. But, you know, if one person, you know, like, um, I don't remember the original bassist name because I haven't done too many reactions with him in it. I'm so used to seeing Marco. But when you take the original bassist compared to Marco, it's like, even though you definitely get a different feel with Marco, when you go back to the original lineup, it's like, you don't really feel like you're missing out on anything because even though they bring something different to the table, it's still very effective and that is a credit to everybody involved in the process of you know who gets in you know because they try to make sure it's like we don't want carbon copies of what we had but we want to still make sure that we get the feel of who we are as a group and they do it so perfectly and it's just amazing how when you can go from one era and then go to another area and you hear how completely different it is. But yet at the same time, you still love it just as much. That is what I'm getting at this exact moment. <laughs> you get it too, my dude. You get it too. Oh my goodness. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I love how she works so hard to get the crowd into it and how they just so easily feed into it. It's amazing to watch. Yes. Boss battle theme vibes, anyone? That is such a cool shot. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that was cool. What's going on here, though? Okay. I'm about to say, they aren't done yet, are they? Wow. Oh, 
Okay, this is another thing I love about this era right here. And I think the first time I saw it, even though it wasn't um, Taria on the vocals, but it was Floor. That was my introduction to Floor. But it was uh, with Ghost Love Score, how you felt like you got almost like a medley of songs and genres all in one song. That is another thing that I love about this era is I feel like you get that a lot more because I was talking earlier about how you got kind of got like um, almost like a vibe like this could fit into um, like either in like a video game or opening credits for like an anime. But then here, like where I'm like, they aren't done yet, are they? And then it felt like they just completely switched the song up and it got into a more hard rock vibe with it. And the seamless transition in there. Uh, though I will say, I do have to point out, I love the interaction that I always see between Empu and Tarya in these performances. Granted, Empu really interacts with everybody, so I can't really just say it's just him and her. He interacts with everybody, especially when he and Marcos get into it. Whoo, boy, that's magic right there. But I just love seeing that interaction amongst the group. And I do have to say, I do kind of appreciate that small break they gave because it's kind of like, wait, what's going on here? And then they go into it. It's like, it's like you had a little bit of a chance to breathe before they kind of just kind of delivered that little haymaker right there. Because that is exactly what they did. They kind of threw a haymaker right there and they connected hardcore. But you had enough time to breathe that, you know, you may have been able to take it for a little bit, but you know, it's... It is amazing how they just do those seamless transitions. And um, based on the time, I, you know, we got like a minute left in the song. I would not be surprised if we get another one, but we shall see. Look at how everybody is getting into it too. See, I'm getting like this hardcore, like boss fight vibe with it now. slow cooldown too. That's a nice touch. <laughs> Alright y'all, that was Wonderlust by Nightwish. From Wishes to Eternity, and yo, that was a fire tune. I absolutely loved it. I think what really did it for me, it was already really cool to me to begin with, but then when they hit that switch near the end, and as I said on my last break, that is what I really love about this particular era of Nightwish, is you really feel like you get that real big mix. Whereas compared, um, you know, with uh, Annette and Floor, you kind of get, you know, it's like they, kinda, I don't want to say they necessarily stick to one genre, but it doesn't feel like they switch so much in the song. You know, they may have different styles of songs, but with this era, it's like you could literally, it feels like it's just like a mixture of different songs for um, those of you who are old enough. Well, I shouldn't say old enough because I'm, you know, not even 40 yet and I know the Beatles very well. But it's kind of like when you think of the song A Day in the Life where really that song is just two songs turned into one, you know, because it was like Paul had, you know, a tune that he didn't couldn't quite finish. John, you know, with the main part, you know, had his part that he had like a blank spot in the middle. So they combined, literally combined the two songs together. and found a way you know to transition into one and then transition back into the other and I feel like that is exactly what Nightwish does in this particular era is it feels like 
you know, it's just like maybe he just writes a couple songs and maybe it's like couldn't figure out how to finish it. So it's like, oh, hey, let's find a way to transition into this one because this one is unfinished. I can't really figure out what to do with this one. So we'll transition into this one and, you know, we'll make it all one song. And he makes it work. And I think uh, between this and Ghost Love Score is really, really prime examples of that. Now, I don't know if that's exactly what happens uh, with it. That's just the main um example I could give in the idea of how you can mix songs together to make them into one was using a day in the life but that's kind of like the feeling that I get from that whether that's exactly what happens or not I don't know he could have easily have just simply have just written it like those but it works and that is what I love probably the most about this era it is absolutely fantastic to listen to and I love how even when um, the song itself kind of changed. You felt the energy in the group change too. And you felt the energy in the crowd change with that. And I think that's the main reason why I really love uh, digging into this particular concert. But, whoo boy, what a tune. I really loved it. Definitely, again, you know, feels like every time I do a new Nightwish reaction, it's easily, like, in my top. So, <laughs> I'm just going to stop saying, you know, that song reached into my top 10 because in all honesty, uh, it's probably kind of like everybody said, outside of maybe my number one, but in terms of like my total top 10, it's probably going to be whatever the last 10 Nightwish songs I listen to, you know, and then I can listen to 10 completely different ones and that top 10 is going to change again, drastically. Uh, I completely understand how you guys can always say, you know, it's like my favorite Nightwish song is whichever one I listen to last because it feels like in terms of my top 10 Nightwish songs is the last 10 I listened to. So uh, I will say this. I think a little fun thing I'm going to do at some point is I'm probably going to list my personal top 10 uh, for Nightwish. Now that I've gotten quite a few under my belt, that is something I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I'll probably wait a little bit before I do that, but definitely something I feel like, uh, actually that would probably make a really good live stream if I just put my top 10 list together and then, uh, do a live stream on that. I'm getting a lot of live stream ideas. I really need to start making time to do some, but either which way, I'm rambling now, so I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, cut it right there. So we will go ahead and, uh, head on out here. I thank you all for stopping by. Hope you all enjoyed the reaction as much as I enjoyed reacting to this one. And I will catch you all down the road for my next Nightwish reaction.